Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Let's talk about growth, growth as a YouTuber. Now, truth is, a few months ago, I was one of the fastest growing YouTubers in the MTI community, and that's no longer true. No, I've had the, my pitfalls, I've seen my fame turn downwards a little. Uh, it's growing, but it's not really growing as fast as it used to. And uh, my viewership has remained kind of stable. I'm not really growing and I'm not really decreasing. Now, a few months ago that was different. My subscribership went down by half. My uh, video viewer rate uh, dropped by 30%. Yeah, things were not looking good. Truth is, I was in panic mode. What will I do? What will I do? What have I done wrong? So naturally I started out quite calmly Moving forward, learning about the tools and traits of being a YouTuber, I decided to start from scratch. What makes a good YouTuber? So I found a quick tip, be funny. And I thought, oh my god, I'm screwed. Those who know me might know I am not really known for being funny. Truth is, uh, no joke, I was awarded the least funny person of the year award on one of the social forums that I was a big member of in my teenage years. Yeah, my articles on the forum on philosophy were so boring, people were basically banding together, forming brigades, voting brigades, to ensure that I was elected. Yeah, I'm not funny. One of the MTI YouTubers out there, Brian Chambers, went so far as to say, boring is invisible. And oh my god, I can feel myself disappearing this very moment. I'm going away. I'm disappearing. I'm disappearing. Yeah, after some time of introspection, it hit me. My problem. I am the least dramatic person in the world. There's been tons of YouTubers coming after me in the past year, trying to start up drama, trying to stir up conflict, and I've literally given them nothing. People are coming to my streams with popcorn, carrying big bags of popcorn, and they're like, where is it? Where is the conflict? And nothing is happening. There is nothing going on. Another YouTuber can basically make videos about me calling me a fake piece of shit, and my response is, hmm. I wonder what I did to upset him so. Yeah, I've had a lot of people try to start up conflict with me over the years, and I think some of them were just people desperately trying to get some kind of reaction from me. And I never really thought it was worth my energy. At the same time, I'm realizing the value of fun in education and in learning. I'm valuing the part of being an infotainer. I follow channels that are funny. I laugh at YouTubers that mix the topic of fun with information. I love infotainment. Now, I think, personally, I've been in this hole of introspection and of search of depth. I've been so focused on learning about myself and my Enneagram type and who I am that I've had no time to laugh at all the absurdity going on around me. I've been so focused on fulfilling my goals and accomplishing my passion that I've had no time to enjoy or be excited about what is going on around me. I'm getting an apartment in Amsterdam. I moved to Amsterdam. I fucking moved from Sweden to Amsterdam. I started dating one of the best girls in the world. And then I'm sitting there going, hmm, I wonder how I'll make this journey work. Now, if you want to throw a stereotype of an INFJ at me, it's probably Albus Dumbledore. I am fucking Albus Dumbledore. If you'd met me one year ago, I was... Well, you wouldn't even have met me, because I spent all day in a tower writing, researching, thinking. Two years ago, I was doing nothing but read and write and think. I didn't speak to anyone, I didn't meet anyone, I didn't do anything. At some point there I don't even think I thought I was a human, I, thought I, I didn't even think I had an ego or a person or something, uh, I didn't even think I was a part of this world, I was just somewhere up there, I was, I was just this bubbling like cloud, circling above everything, studying everything from a distance, going, hmm, I wonder what that is. And then people are looking at my transformation in my videos and they're going, that guy must be an extrovert. 
And I'm like, what the hell just happened? How did I go from that to that? Now, I actually went to a meetup for like, upcoming YouTubers. I met YouTubers with between 1,000 to hundreds of thousands of followers in Sweden. And everyone was like, what the hell are you doing, man? Who the hell are you? I met people doing prank videos. I met people doing more prank videos. I met some other people also doing prank videos. I met the person doing training videos. And I met people doing gaming videos. And everyone was looking at me going, Personality psychology? What the hell is that? People were literally looking at me going, Oh, what? Is that a thing? And that kind of made me realize I was living a completely different world from all the other YouTubers. The advice I found on being a good YouTuber was not for me. The information I saw, the articles I saw, the things I saw about clickbaity thumbnails, that was not for me. So you might have noticed I actually make videos related to the thumbnails I make. Usually the words that I use in my thumbnail are also in the video or in the headline. Because that's what I'm talking about. Of course. That's where you, why you came there to begin with. Now the thing I've realized is that I've been making videos with absolutely zero care in the world about what my audience likes. There's this statistic section showing you your most popular videos and I haven't even visited it. I've just been going, hey, I'm interested in investigating that topic. Maybe I should make a video about it. Then I've been making a video because making a video has been a good way for me to address and to communicate my own thoughts. While I talk, I go, oh, I didn't even know that. My god, that was a good way of praising it. I've been writing articles for seven years without even thinking about if my re readers like reading it. I've been posting videos going, well, I find it interesting, so whatever. <laughs> and I've been told many times by other YouTubers that, my god, Eric, you're so charismatic, you're so good at communication and marketing, you're so good at making other people like you. And I'm going, Oh really? I had no idea. I had no clue. You think so? And the truth of the matter is, I think most YouTubers start out just that way. They're just doing things for fun. They have no clue about who the receiver is or what they will want or what other people will consume. And I don't even think that's been my priority. I think as an INFJ I've always felt drawn to sharing and communicating my works and ideas with other people. No matter how isolated or how alone I've been throughout my life, I've always tried to reach out to people and to put my content out there and to have an impact. But also, I've always been kind of detached from the impact my actual content was having on other people. And I'm realizing uh, all of those lists telling me how to become a successful YouTuber are wrong. I wouldn't succeed on any of those tips. Those thumbnails would not work for me. Those clickbaity thumbnails or video challenges wouldn't get me any viewers. They would only embarrass me. It would completely crush my integrity if I started making content because other people wanted it, not because I wanted it. And it would take the fun out of it. And here we are sitting together having a discussion. Well, actually, it's mostly me doing the talking. And I'm wondering, I'm left wondering, why are you talking to me? Why are you talking to the least funny guy on YouTube? Why are you talking to the most boring guy of the year? Award winner, Eric Thor. How did we manage to become so many people in just less than one year? Yeah, if all the people who subscribe to me would come together and sit together at a soccer arena, I would fill up the entire arena. Or maybe you're one of the people that have realized that funny is not always funny. And serious, it's not always boring. I don't know, I think I'm gonna stay who I am. I think I'm gonna try to maintain some integrity in all of this. And try to see where it leads. Just me, just who I am. Just having fun making videos and exploring various theories. And I'm realizing over and over the importance of not feeling like a failure anymore. And the realization that in that experience and in that acceptance of self... I can find so much humor and so much to have fun about. And I'm realizing with all mistakes I'm gonna make in the coming videos, in everything I do, there's gonna be so many bloopers and so many chances to get to know me, the human behind the screen. And hopefully I'm not the only person who's gonna enjoy that.
That's all for today, thank you all for watching and hope to see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, my first year on YouTube is coming to an end and it's time for my second year on YouTube. What's gonna happen next? How am I gonna change? What's gonna happen to this channel? You decide. You let me know. You leave a like, you share, you subscribe. Meet Arson, you Yane, and let's see where we end up together.